Yo, what's going on guys? It's Cynical Lens. Welcome back to another episode of Sea Salt Snippets. Today for you guys, we've got some spicy topics to talk about, so let's just dive straight into it. So recently, Tetsuya Nomura was interviewed by Famitsu to briefly comment on his future projects. Famitsu asked, Mr. Nomura, what about the progress of the games? Referring to that of both Kingdom Hearts 3 as well as the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Nomura said, I won't tell, I will be scolded if I tell. The rules about giving information on both works are strictly decided. Now I feel like carrying a heavy burden. Once things settle down, I would like to release information in a peaceful manner. Famitsu went on to say, any message for the fans? Nomura said, about the titles I'm working on, there were no new announcements other than to study a Final Fantasy NT at the Tokyo Game Show, but there are so many things in store, so please wait for a proper announcement. So of course, that doesn't really give us too much insight towards any of the future projects that Tetsuya Nomura is currently working on, being that of Kingdom Hearts 3 and the Final Fantasy 7 Remake, and I know when it comes to the Final Fantasy 7 Remake, a lot of people are desperate to find out more information about the project, mainly because of the fact that it's been just such a long time since anything, absolutely anything, has actually popped up to do with FF7. And what's weird is, considering the fact that this year is the 30th anniversary of the overall Final Fantasy franchise, as well as the 20th anniversary of Final Fantasy 7, people are wondering, you know, it's kind of strange that there hasn't been any Final Fantasy 7 remake news or information or even something like a trailer that has released thus far throughout this year. And so when Tetsuya Nomura is, of course, referring to that of carrying a heavy burden, this pretty much stems from the fact that he knows people are absolutely desperate to find out more about this project, mainly looking at the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Now, when it comes down to it, Tetsuya Nomura is, of course, the director for both Final Fantasy VII as well as Kingdom Hearts III. However, though, he is not the person in charge of when and where new information for both of these projects gets displayed and revealed. More so, that comes back to the higher-ups of Square Enix. And so, it would seem like Square Enix are extremely strict from from what Tetsuya Nomura is saying within this news in terms of when and where he's allowed to talk about new information. Next up, I want to talk a little bit about the brand new pet system that was recently included into the global version of Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. This is a system that was actually implemented into the Japanese version of the game quite some time ago, but finally, global has the pet system. So in case you guys haven't checked it out already, I recommend that you guys do so. Having a pet, you'll get it straight away, like as soon as you log into the game. Now the pet is actually known as a spirit, so in a sense it is actually a dream eater. Of course we know that the Cherithi is considered a dream eater as well, which kind of means the world space in which Daybreak Town is located is somewhere in a sort of sleeping realm, because of course we know that from Dream Drop Distance, dream eaters can only exist in the sleeping realm. Now you can fully customize it, there's a bunch of different options upon first obtaining the pet. You can do different accessories, different sort of headpieces and tails. The pet will also follow you around within quests, but I think the most important thing thing about the pet is it actually gives you a new medal slot. So opposed to having, you know, six total medals, including your guest medal, you can now have seven. Five of your own, one guest one, as well as a pet medal. And the other really good thing about this is there is absolutely no medal cost. So you can chuck whatever medal you want to uh, into your pet to use while you're questing. The system though is really, really cool. You can actually attach a lot of medals to your pet to upgrade your pet's rank. Ranking up your spirit with medals will increase the damage multiplier for the pet pet metal slot, which is really, really good. You can get some insane damage multipliers here, so make sure to rank up your spirit. The other really cool thing about ranking up is you will also unlock these new things called tricks, which are essentially pet special abilities. The first one you will come across is steel, and steel will give you a 50% chance for enemies to drop a double items. And also, while we're on the topic of actually talking about the pet system, recently over on Twitter, the Kingdom Hearts Union Cross Twitter account recently tweeted out this tweet saying, if you could pick an extra accessory for your pet, what would it be? A beard, more bow ties, or perhaps some fairy wings. What's really cool about this is that Square Enix are quite obviously asking for the community's input towards different accessories and customizable items to put on your pet. And it's not really too often that Square Enix actually ask for, you know, community input, but it would seem like from the start of this year, Square Enix are most certainly getting more involved with the community, especially from what we saw with the whole patching uh, surrounding Kingdom Hearts 2.8, but more so specifically Kingdom Kingdom Hearts 1.5 and 2.5, it definitely seems more apparent that, you know, Square Enix are more prone to actually take in player feedback these days. Getting back on track though, I suggest that if you guys are involved in Kingdom Hearts Union Cross and you kind of want to give, you know, Square Enix your two cents,
sense on what different accessories and customizable items you would like on pets for the game. I'm going to leave the tweet in the description down below so you guys can simply go over there, put in your input, and who knows, maybe you'll see your idea being implemented into the game. And last up for today, uh, I know this is kind of a odd thing to talk about, but I thought I would just mention it to you guys because personally to me, I find this absolutely hilarious. Now, in terms of new merchandise for Kingdom Hearts, this year has been absolutely insane. I don't know if you guys have noticed this, but merch for the Kingdom Hearts franchise has been popping up absolutely left, right, and center. And for me personally, I kind of feel like it's a ploy in the sense of further promotion, more merchandise leading up to the launch and release of Kingdom Hearts 3. Now, though, one piece of merchandise uh, that I find particularly quite interesting that popped up uh, on my Twitter newsfeed a few days ago was the fact that we can now purchase Kingdom Hearts underwear. Now, I think I'm going to end up making a complete video talking about this whole merchandise situation in the coming days, so stay on the lookout for that. But this is absolutely hilarious. I remember saying not too long ago that, you know, if anything has a Kingdom Hearts brand or sort of label on it, you can bet your bottom booty I am buying it. And even if it comes to underwear, if, of course, one day we actually end up receiving some Kingdom Hearts underwear, you bet your bottom booty I'm buying that. I even found an old tweet from Joe July of this year with me even saying this exact thing. God damn, what is wrong with me? However, guys, that is all the news and information for today. In the comment section down below, let me know your guys' thoughts and opinions towards today's news. And until next time, guys, I'll catch you later. Peace.